What is up everyone? I am the winner and welcome to our game room. Today we're going to take a look at the game that came in ranked 14th out of my top 123 games of all time. Today's game is a game that was number one for me for like four or five years in a row. Maybe four, I think. Uh, when this game came out, it sold out immediately and I'm like, oh, oh I didn't get a chance to pre-order it. I caught it late uh, and then my wife ended up overpaying for it for me to have as a birthday gift which was super nice of her and we loved the game ever since it fell just a little bit just due to lack of play and then other things have come and go you know in the meantime but i still love every time i bring this game out and this game is dead of winter by plaid hat games i think now fantasy flight owns the rights and unfortunately i don't think they're doing anything with it i heard i thought i heard at one point they were gonna make some sort of living card game or something out of it, but I'm pretty sure by now that's went kind of by the wayside. Uh, in this game, you are survivors and you're kind of dealing with a zombie apocalypse in the dead of winter. Ding! Uh, but anyways, um, there's a scenario that you're playing and you go and you try to do the things you need to do to beat the scenario. But at the same time, you're having to deal with crises within the colony. You're dealing with the zombies that are at different places and your colony itself. But you're also dealing with the potential that there's a betrayer in your midst. Uh, and that's where the game kind of gets tight because you fail one crisis and then all of a sudden people are like, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute, that shouldn't have been in the crisis pile Somebody put that in there. Who? And then all of a sudden the game starts getting crazy where everybody's, you know, accusing everybody else of, I think you're doing something kind of suspicious. You shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. Uh, the game does fall short a little bit if the betrayer is the person that goes last within the last few turns because they can kind of tank the game. There isn't a ton that you can do. You can exile them, but I've I've only seen one game out of my lot of plays where the Betrayer was the actual last player on the last turn, and that actually made us lose the game. Uh, but generally, <laughs> a lot of games have been, oh, there's a Betrayer, holy crap, um, who is it? And then there was no Betrayer. That happens. Uh, when you play two players, which me and my wife play a lot of two player this because we both really enjoy this game. You actually don't play with a Betrayer, which I feel like takes a little from the game, but you actually play the game on hardcore mode, so it's actually pretty tough. Uh, the thing this game introduced that was kind of innovative at the time was a Crossroads deck. And basically what it was is when the player to your right is taking their turn, you draw a Crossroads card. If they do one of the, like, whatever the trigger is on that card, which could be, hey, I moved to the police station. Well, hold on. Or, hey, I found a survivor. Well, hold on. Or I sneezed. Well, hold on. Oh, I yawned. <laughs> like, it could even be things physically happening outside of the game, which is crazy. Uh, whenever one of those things would happen, you'd stop, you'd say whatever the thing is, and it might be a group decision or it may be a player-dependent decision. They make the decision, you carry it out, crazy things can happen. I actually was Felicia Day, which is a promo. It, it, you can get it as a promo. Uh, and she has the ability of acting out another character, and there's a dog as a character in this game, and the funny thing was, is to get past some bandits, she acted like a dog with a gun, <laughs> and it was crazy, like, the stories that come out of this game are wonderful. Uh, we actually had the Long Night expansion, and the, I forgot what the other expansion's called, but it's actually one that takes like, because uh, the Long Night actually gives you a second colony board and more locations. And the Warring Colonies is the other expansion. And what it does is actually makes this game, instead of it being 2 to 5, it makes it 2 to 11 players, which I really want to play with that one of these days. And I, I don't know when I'm going to get to play it. I've actually tried to talk people into playing it at Origins, which hasn't come to fruition yet. But basically what it does is you have one colony of players playing, another colony of players is playing, and then a a lone wolf player. So there's some weird interactions where betrayers can happen on both sides and things can flip-flop and you can fight the other colonies. Oh, I think that would be so awesome. 
And I'm going to have to find a way to get that played because that just sounds like a great way to play. But unfortunately, when I got that expansion, the game kind of lost its shine for a lot of players. And I still love this game. It was even featured on South Park, you know, and those guys are awesome. I really enjoy watching South Park and the fact that they're big gamers and they enjoy this game, too, was awesome for me. Uh, like I said, this was my number one for a long time. I, I really enjoy this game. Uh, I really enjoy both expansions, even though I haven't got to play the other one just yet. But I really, really, I love the idea of it. But man, if you're looking for a zombie betrayer-esque game, this is definitely one to look up. The only problem is a little out of print, but I don't believe it's expensive on the secondary market right now. So definitely give Dead a Winner a shot. I, I really love this game. Uh, it's my number 14. Come back tomorrow. We'll see what number 13 is in my top 123 games of all time. So as always, thanks for watching, keep playing, and keep winning.